In the 1960s, Don Yanko emerged as one of the SCCA's top road racers. But Yanko became famous for what he did away from the racetrack. He took regular Chevy production cars and turned them into bona fide racing machines, selling them at his Pennsylvania car dealership. Not many were made and relative few still survive, making Yanko's some of the most sought after collector cars in the world. Today, four partners and their team are taking on a huge challenge. Build a replica 1969 Camaro that uses today's technology but remains faithful to the original. It's a gamble that could breathe new life into a legend. Hello and welcome once again to Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you've been following our saga, you've seen how the guys here at Brand New Muscle Car have gone to great lengths to make sure that their Yanko Super Camaro looks just like the original built by Don Yanko back in 1969. Last time, the team ordered a custom rear end but realized bolting it on would require different mounting brackets. They salvaged a pair from an authentic 68 Camaro and shop assistant Mason jumped in to paint the pieces. That made him a hero, at least for the day. <laughs> I night you, young man. I knight you in the realm of the painters of all time. Thank you. Sir Mason. <laughs> Sir Mason. <laughs> you look so beautiful oh, okay. for me. Now that the mounts are ready to accept the suspension, it's time for the guys to bolt it together. Original Yanko Camaros used leaf springs, and that's a technology that dates back to medieval times. The multi-link suspension on this brand new muscle car provides better handling and performance, and it's more easily adjustable than old-fashioned leaf springs. And other thing done. Now it's time to put the front suspension on the car. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our subframe. Camaros are a unibody car, so it doesn't have a full frame. It has a frame in the rear mounted to the body, and it has a subframe that bolts to the body. So this is the first piece from Chassis Works. They're gonna take it over to the body. These are all the parts. The full front suspension from Chassis Works again. Wheel wood brakes, spindles, all the other pieces, A-arms. We're gonna take it over and put it on the body. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Let's lay everything out on the floor and make sure we've got everything. What do you think? Does it look like everything? Everything's here. Okay. You got out, out, outer, outer tie rods? Has it got tie rods on it? I guess it's got it. It still needs ends, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't see it. The outer tie rods. And again, can you order the outer <laughs> tie rods? <laughs> it's a match set. <laughs> Everything's here hey. somewhere. <laughs> like where? I don't see it. <laughs> again, I do the parts, and I discovered that I'd ordered the entire front end except outer tie rods. My bad. You think this thing will accept 69 Camaro tie rod ends? <laughs> we couldn't be that lucky, right? No. No. They'll be mainline part store tie rod in we just need to find out what they are. Oh, uh, okay. But we can get on its wheels, it just won't steer. So we're okay for that. Right, right. Okay. Well, I'll call Chassis Works, find out what make and model tie rod ends we need, and hopefully O'Reilly's will have them. Won't take long to put them on. Don Yanko was an accomplished road racer, so it would stand to reason that his conversion cars got not only more horsepower, but better suspension to boot. This started out in 1965 with the Yanko Stinger Corvairs, and it was very, very successful. It was a dual-purpose car. It could be driven all week to work whatever and then have some fun with it racing and doing events on the weekend. This was my very first view of Yanko Chevrolet, and I was too shy to come up here and actually talk to a salesman, so I'd come up here late at night when the dealership was closed and look through this window at the lights on the Yanko Stinger Corvair on display inside the showroom. And I made that trip several times until I was able to actually organize the money, give my dad to co-sign a loan and actually buy one, which I still have to this day. This was the typical 1940s, 50s dealership of the day. Naturally, it was in a lot more shiny repair. What we're looking at here was the high performance shop where the race cars and the engine building and race specific stuff took place. And to the left of that, our dyno room, we had a Clayton 400 horsepower in the ground dyno. We used to make all the noise that the neighborhood could stand. In this area here, 
there's room for about three or four cars in there. And that's where all the conversions were done to the 67, 68 Camaros. Of all things, there was only one lift in the place. Everything was done on the floor. There's no hoist in here. There was not even an engine crane. In today's standards, it was really, really a tough deal. There was a lot going on here, and we were the premier dealership back then, you know, for retail sales and everything else involved, too, let alone what was going on in the back. It was just a job back in the day, a way of making a living. I was in awe of all these people. I mean, this is a famous place. I don't think I was ever formerly an employee of any kind. I got paid in cash or you know, individual checks for $20, $30, $50 here and there, none of which I thought to save, of course. So it was just kind of a happenstance thing. I just kind of fell into it and happened to be here at the right time and the place became famous. Coming up, a rare look at one of Don Yenko's original race car conversions. And body man Martin does everything by the book. Uh, plenty of destruction. Classic Industries presents brand new muscle car Yanko Camaro is brought to you by Chris Austin's Chassis Works, the home of higher technology. Performance Unlimited, your crate engine experts, building your dream and ours one engine at a time. DJS Fabrications, the best mobile car dolly built today. And by Classic Industries, America's first choice in restoration and performance parts and accessories. There's a place in Melbourne, Florida that almost defies description. It's the 100,000 square foot American Muscle Car Museum. It's a private museum, but owner Mark Pylock opens the doors for school groups and charity events. The museum features the biggest collection of Yankos on the planet, including one beauty that's the subject of our Yanko Collector's Spotlight. Today we're looking at Don Yanko's 1966 Yanko Stinger. He built 115 of these cars between 1966 and 1969. Five of them were actually the stage three cars or the race model cars, which we have here in front of us. This is a DP on the side, which means D production class. These cars were originally built because Don was tired of looking at the Mustang when he was going out racing, and he didn't want to be disloyal to Chevrolet, so he just decided the only way I can do that is to build my own car. He started building some of these, and some of them we actually formed up with pizza boxes to make the molds on it to start with. This has a 195 cubic inch motor that produced 225 horsepower. What they did is they designed four of the Rochester's single barrel carburetors on it. Weight ratio in the back with this made an excellent, well-balanced car. Another unique feature, to save weight on the stage three or the race model cars, they actually had a cap, removed the window, the window regulators, and as you can see, there is no carpet. It's just strictly a race model. This car has extensive race history. It actually has extensive show history. It's been at the Chevy Vet Fest, which is now Macacken, and has done very well. This car has also been vintage raced. It's number 86 out of the original 100 that Don Yanko had ordered. We have had this car since 2009. We actually have all the original documentation, and we have the SCCA records to go along with the car. There's two of us here, Jerry and myself, that take care of this car. Right now, we just keep it highly maintained. We make sure all the fluids are good in it. We take it out a couple times a year. We have 42 acres here in a one mile complete course and we keep it in good running condition. Back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the rear suspension is finished so the guys are ready for the next step. Now we're gonna put on the front suspension but we should take a second to talk about it because on a 1969 Yinko Camaro, that was 50 years ago. So technology was good but it was, you know, obviously has improved a lot. One of the things Yinko did was when he ordered the car from Chevrolet, he ordered the heavy duty shocks Heavy duty suspension, heavy duty cool springs, heavy duty sway bar, which was great. But 50 years has passed, so things have changed a lot. So now we're gonna put on the latest and greatest stuff from a company called Chassis Works out in California. And you can see the difference 50 years of technology makes when it comes to upper and lower control arms, wheel wood brakes. Look at this brake rotor versus the old school. Even if you don't know anything about cars, you can tell that has gotta be better. And it is, quite a bit. And these go on the subframe. Once we get the subframe on the car, these mount on like this, and you'll notice better metals, better alloys. They're stronger, lighter, more efficient. Look at the difference in these cool springs. It's amazing. This will make the car drive better. It'll make it safer. It'll make it more fun. It's important to remember that this is not a restoration. This is a brand new car. And that's what we do here at Brandon Musk Car. We build old cars that look old, but drive new. Well, who need instructions? <laughs> I got the real mechanics in here. What is it? 
No, wait, what is the mechanics? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of it is knowing what doesn't work versus what works because you don't know what works, obviously, until it works. So you go through a lot of things that don't work. Hint our keys for the control arm bolt so everything moves nice and free. Nice and free. No squeak after it rings. Grab, grab a little bit. Ah, you got. <laughs> you got it by better tools. <laughs> what are you doing with my socket? Look, look. Now you owe me. You owe me a, a tool. Hey guys, we're here. Okay. We're, we're... <laughs> oh yeah, you please. You got it on yet? You're not ready. How long does this take? There's four of you for crying out loud. Hey. Good. I don't even want to talk about. It. Call me whenever it's done. Yeah, we'll be four. back. Man, I tell you, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, shoot, sometimes, I mean, we're here 15 hours a day. We're here more than we're at home, so it's gotta be fun. Look, look at my hands, it is so, so bad right now, hey, look. Hey, after, after look. this, after this, after this point, uh -huh. right here, like when body man does not touch the car and contaminate it. You know, things can go wrong and things can go bad, but that's completely okay. That's, that's just part of anybody's every day. No, time out on this one. You say a body man. Body man. But I'm not, I'm not a body man. I'm a mechanic. <laughs> you definitely don't. I'm a mechanic right now, you see? If you've ever met somebody that's ever had every day and nothing ever go wrong, please let me meet them because I would love to. Um, you know, it's just how you, it's just how you roll with things. If you got a mechanic's hat uh -huh. and a body man. man that, so exactly. right now, right now, right now you're in the paint area and you don't have a painter's hat. I haven't seen that hat yet. I haven't seen that hat. <laughs> Let me find one. I mean, it's like, it is crazy outside working with these guys, so it is fun. It is fun. I tried it like this, like oh, this. Yeah. No, God. No. Not either. No, no. But look, look at this. I no hat and look, look. But look at this. But look at this. If you take this, I'll take the. I, I don't even want to see Look that. at this. You take this. Look at this. You see? That's sexy, yeah? No, that's sexy right there. Yeah, because you cover your whole face because you're so ugly. That's why. <laughs> Coming up, the Yenko gets new brakes, and we go to the factory where those brakes are made. Photos and documents shown on brand new muscle car Yanko Camaro, courtesy of Mark Gillespie. For even more about Don Yanko and the supercars that made his dealership famous, look online for the Yanko era and the Yanko era continued Cannonsburg and beyond. Martin is the quality control inspector for brand new muscle car, and he gives the subframe a once over. Once he gives it the okay, the crew sets to work attaching the new suspension. This one is the funny part, you see? Look, look. You see? Ah, easy, huh? <laughs> Put him backwards, so shh. Nobody say nothing. Ah! <laughs> This is what I wake up and I want to do every day. And sometimes it's a really big headache. And sometimes it gets a little stressful. Sometimes it even gets maybe even a little overbearing. But that's the challenge that you want to wake up and face every day. That's, that's what I want to do. We're just measuring to find out which shock bushing spacer that we need. So this fits perfectly in here. So you, when you tighten the bolt, it doesn't pinch this together. They give you three or four different sizes. So we just have to find the right size that fits in there. Well, we're lining up the hole to get the uh, collar pin through to hold the castle nut on. This is what holds everything together for safety. And then we fold this over so it doesn't ever come out. All done. Ooh, this so, is nice stuff. What do you think? Yeah, double adjustable shocks. Yeah. I like it. What I love about it is independent front suspension, but on a Camaro, because it already has this same basic this setup, setup, it doesn't look totally different. It totally right? different, doesn't yeah. look like uh, weird, uh -huh. strange. I mean, it looks right on this car. The process of having a car hand built is really cool. I always tell people that, no matter who you are, how much money you have, how many cars you have, having a one-off custom hand-built designed hot rod built for you, yes, it takes six to nine months, but 
I take pictures all the way, take video all the way, I make them a baby book. I mean, it's actually, it's an experience. And what's funny is I had a client the other day on the phone say, you know what I like about you? You don't tell us what you think our car ought to be. And I said, well, it's, it's your thing. You know, if you want it, I'm happy to do it. The other part I think is really cool is it's one of a kind, by default. Hey, Martin, the brakes are ready to go. Yeah, ready? Nice. I was just following along with Omar told me to do. <laughs> so if it don't come out right, I can blame you. <laughs> you wipe the spindles down first. Wipe all the surface rust off. And we'll put a little bit of grease on there. And then we'll put the hubs and rotors on. One of the things that's really important about these cars when we build them is brakes. Does it go? Does it stop? People ask about it right off the bat every time. And with the original brakes, you had drum brakes, sometimes you had disc brakes in the front. We like to go with four-wheel disc brakes from Wheelwood. Wheelwood is a fantastic company. They've been doing it for decades. They're very good. The product is affordable. It works well. The service is great. We use them on all our restaurants, all our builds, unless the customer absolutely doesn't want it. But usually, they're happy to have it. Wilwood is a manufacturer of disc brakes, and it's gonna be for a lot of different applications. Racing is our background, and that's where we got started in 1977. All but the brake pads and brake fluid are manufactured here in the Wilwood facility in Camarillo, California. Each step, all the way from when we get the raw goods to having it machined, to having it anodized, powder coated, assembled, boxed, and put on the shelf, there's gonna be at least one to two different steps that someone's going to evaluate and make sure that the product is working properly. A few key questions that Wilwood's gonna ask is what you are going to do with your car. And you're gonna take it to a car show on the weekends. We may go with a 12 inch brake with a four piston caliper and that's more than enough brake for what you're gonna need. But if you're gonna take it out, probably like these cars that they're building for the Yanko and really drive them and actually want them to perform, we may change into a brake system that has better characteristics of cooling, ventilation, pedal feel, pad wear. Those are all key ingredients to make sure that we pick the correct brakes with the right brake pad for the customer's wants and needs. We worked with Brand New Muscle Car to come up with the correct brake package that's gonna suit their inevitable customer's needs and wants. We're looking at doing something that fits properly inside the wheel so they have the aesthetic value but it's also going to give them the performance if they decide to go out and put the car on the track, autocross, or just take it to the car show for the weekend, it's going to be the right break for them. Still to come. Amigos. Do you see a theme here with Martin? And it's time to install the subframe on the front of this unibody Camaro and mount the tires and wheels. Classic Industries presents brand new muscle car Yanko Camaro is brought to you by Exalta Coating Systems. We paint winners. Scoggin Diggy Park Center, your source for custom built street to strip power. Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. And by brand new muscle car, building yesterday's dream cars today. Today, bigger vehicles like trucks use an on-frame construction. Essentially, the body sits on top of one big steel frame. Most cars, like this Camaro, use a unibody construction. That means lots of separate parts combined to make up the frame. Some of these parts can be made of lighter materials, and that means better efficiency and better performance. This, this one, the big ones, is for the front, for the radiator support. And these ones, the small one, is for the rear. You go, this one, where the wall right here, this one, who need those? Now the final steps before mounting the subframe to the chassis. Adding a few bushings and some bolts at the mounting point should be a piece of cake for such an experienced crew, right? Yeah, somebody need those. Yeah. <laughs> My need those. You don't need either of these ones too, so. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm, I'm okay, you know, I still remember. Now that everything's in position, it's finally time to mate the chassis with the subframe. It's imperative that the guys hit their marks exactly, so they use the lift to inch the body down bit by bit. This is a true test of whether they built and attached every piece correctly. Bring it down a little, Tony. That's good right there. Don't push up. 
Right there. You need to go a little bit more higher. Richard, can yeah. you push it up? Up, please. Okay. Last one. Last one. Okay, going up. A little bit more. Okay. Guess what, guys? Another thing, another thing. Done. All right, time to put the shoes on, boys. In 1969, the Camaro had rally wheels and a couple other factory wheels. Yinko wanted to make the car different, so he went with a company called Atlas, which made a knockoff of American Racing five-spoke wheel, very classic wheel. American Racing still makes them. Again, wanted to look old, drive new, so we called American Racing, and they made us exact match wheels, but bigger. They're 17s instead of 15s, and they're a little bit wider in the front and the rear, so we put a bigger, modern tire on it. It still looks right, but it drives much, much better, much nicer tire, much more grip surface on the tire. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Well, thank you guys. Looks good. Another thing done. Let's go home. Bye. Next time on Brand New Muscle Car, watch the body on the 69 Camaro start to take shape. And we'll get our first look at what gives this brand new muscle car extra muscle. I'll, uh... <laughs> I'll just have a stupid look on my face. Oh, wait, that's all the time. That's all the time. <laughs> there was a time on the part of the day looking at each other without. <laughs> How about this? Look at I was looking up. I wasn't even looking at you. <laughs>